Well, hey everybody, I'm Jack, and this is Raw Tropical Living. Thanks for joining me today. Hope everybody's doing well out there. By the time you're watching this, you only got one more day, and then it's off to the weekend. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do this weekend. I'm not going to Pensacola. I'm going to probably just get some work done. If the weather's nice, might do some tie-dye. Uh, but today I want to talk about, because I keep getting asked, why don't I eat a 100% raw food diet? Guys, I do videos every day, so if you are not already subscribed to the channel, I'd appreciate it if you go down there and hit that subscribe button now. Then be sure you click on the little bell and check send notifications so you'll stay subscribed to the channel. Also, got one of a, a new shirt on today. I like to try out different colors. I wear a lot of my gear. Uh, just actually came in the mail um, about 15 minutes before I made this one. I have it in white, but I like it really a lot in the darker colors. No mud, no lotus. Um, you can find my shop, rawtropicallivinggear.com, in the description below. But I'll try my best to remember to put a link directly to this shirt. Oh, and also, like I had mentioned yesterday, I saw a few people start to trickle in. I've got a, a group I'm an activating. It's been around for a while on Facebook. Um, Raw Tropical Living, Raw Your Way. Um, and I've actually got it ready to go now. I put down some of the rules this morning. It's a, it's sort of a, for people that didn't hear, it's sort of a beginner's group. It's for people working their way towards raw. We're not going to have any of the hardcore extremism. I'm probably not even going to accept people that are long time doing this um, unless I really know them to be people that share and not just in there to, uh, you know, lord over people how much they know. But anyhow, people, a lot of people are asking me because I'm putting all these audiences together and I don't know who what I've said to who. Um, why don't I, you know, in fact, a lot of people, well, they'll hear me talk something about cooked and they haven't seen me much. And they're like, what do you mean? I thought you ate a hundred percent raw. I talk about a raw food diet. I've never said a hundred percent and I've never obsessed about a hundred percent. Um, since day one, this has never been an obsession in, of mine. And I've maintained and flourished and gone forward for years without going backwards and forwards. See, when I got in this, let, 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 let's make a little analogy here. See, I don't know why, but a lot of people get in their car when they start this journey and they go down the street a little bit and I guess they hesitate and they turn the car around and they come back. They may not go all the way back home, but they go back. Then they decide, nah, I think I'll keep going. And then they turn around and go. And they're constantly turning around, coming back, taking a detour, looping. I may be slow. And it may, there may have been times where, yes, I'm not, I'm not moving forward at the speed of light, but I've always moved forward. I haven't had these ups and downs. Have you seen me have any of these freakouts that your gurus and icons have had? In fact, in seven, almost seven years, where are some of them now? We've watched them drop by like flies, you know? Um, and a lot of the people, I'm going to be honest with you, a lot of the people you people follow, and not everybody, not everybody. There's some, there's some uh, great examples out there, but a lot of the biggest ones out there <laughs> are a horrible example of this lifestyle. Now, once again, I mentioned this in a video the other day. I'm not throwing any shade at anybody that does 100% raw food diet. Um, I, honestly, out of all, I don't, I don't look at people, take their knowledge or whatever based on 100% raw or not or whatever. I take people for what I can learn from them. And I mentioned I mentioned to you guys all the time that I listened to 801010 plant-based athlete uh, Jay, who is Brazilian jiu-jitsu guy, and he eats cooked food every day. I've learned a lot from him. In the raw world, Chris Kendall. Chris Kendall's one of the dudes that's doing 100% raw that I think is probably doing it as close to how it probably should be done, whatever that is, is possible. Because if you look at the dude, he's kind of the same. He never, he doesn't go back and forth. He doesn't go up and down. He's not having these emotional swings. He's not uber skinny. That's the thing I've noticed too. And I got to know Chris a little, not last year, but at 2017 Woodstock. He's not uber skinny. He eats food. He eats a variety of food. Doesn't eat exactly like me. I'm not planning to start eating exactly like Chris, but Chris is a solid looking guy. He, you know, I think he's a good example of this lifestyle where there's a lot of people out there. For me, and this isn't me judging, this is just giving my opinion, but there's a lot of bad examples. There's a lot of people out there that just nobody's going to ever uh, give any credibility to this lifestyle when somebody looks absolutely, you know, like they're about to fall down dead, you know, and they're just not looking healthy. So my journey has been steady. It's not been back and forth. And I think that, that, that right there is what has made this thing work for me so far. 
Um, I, I'm trying to think back to the very, very first days, like the first month and whatever. I don't think there was ever a point. I think probably I had in my head the possibility, who knows, maybe at one day I will be fully, fully raw. And I think there were a few times where I was a little bit more enamored with, oh, 100% raw, fully raw above everything else. But very, very soon, I'd say within a month, I was kind of like, yeah, I'm not worrying about this. I'm just going to focus on eating as much raw food, fresh food. I'm living in Costa Rica at the time, so I'm getting mad amounts of uh, fresh uh, fruit and produce and whatever. Um, and I never tried to resist. That's the thing, too. What we resist persists. I never resisted when I wanted... I mean, I, I well, that's not really resistance because my mind had shifted. I was going to say I never really resisted eating any cooked food after I became vegan, after I became raw. But that's not exactly true. Um, yes, I resisted stuff like eating, going to my pizza stand and getting a slice of pizza like I used to. I resisted going over to the sports bar and getting wings or eat, going to my buddy's place and eating ribs. But that was a different type of mentality because it was like once I had learned, once I had seen, I couldn't unlearn or unsee. So I knew that was like, I knew that piece of pizza still tastes good. I knew those wings still taste good. But now I could visualize, you know, what it was doing as it was going through my body. But things like potatoes and vegetables and other things like that. I didn't look at, I never looked at that as a failure. I was never, oh my God, okay. Or I was never like trying to hang on and then, okay, I got to eat some cooked food tonight. I was like, okay, if I feel like eating some cooked food, I eat cooked food. Um, didn't eat very much cooked food. I've found, I've just, I'm a practical, <laughs> a practical person. Even though I look like a goofball, I'm pretty practical. I do what up for wherever I am, whatever the environment, whatever the situation I'm in. Now, when I went raw, I was in the city. Shortly after, I go to co go to the beach. I moved back to the beach and lived there for the next three years or so. For the next three years, I ate very, 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 very minimum, minimum uh, cooked food uh, simply because it was hot at the beach. I had fruit everywhere. You didn't want to heat up your house. You didn't want to heat up your body by eating it. I mean, I'm talking about uh, the summers down there, which are the winters here in North America. Brutal, brutal, brutal. So I just didn't want to. So I, the only times I ate cooked food, I think the whole time that I was in uh, Playa Jaco, I'm sure there was a couple of times, but was when I would come back to the States. And I would just kind of mix it in, you know, when I was there. But never obsessed over it. But I've always been very high. I would say I jumped into high raw right off the beginning. There was no going into plant-based or vegan and then moving my way down the line. I went very high raw right off the start. Um, even to this day, any time back from the beginning to this day forward, when I talk about eating cooked food, it's not like to either that I have a day like, okay, today's going to be a cooked day and I just like do what like people like to call a cheat day and just eat a whole bunch of cooked food. On a day where I eat cooked food is generally like any other day. I eat my fruit mostly all day. I eat my ice cream. I have my smoothies. I just that meal that I would normally have, say a salad or something, I eat something cooked and I eat something cleaned. And obsession, I'm telling you, the obsession is, is what I see just like holding so many people back. Holding so, And it's a mental thing, but a lot of people are not going to listen to that message. And another reason why I just, I don't eat a 100% raw food diet or put that absolute necessity of it on there is because of the blue zones. I read this book a while back called The Blue Zones. Even if you haven't read the book, you've probably heard of The Blue Zones. I can't remember. There's six or seven of them. There's one down in Costa Rica. It's up in um, um, Nicoya, Costa Rica. There's there's a Greek island. There's a, a Sardinia. So one, there's a little place off of Sardinia, one of the parts of Sardinia. I'm going to mix them up. And then there's, I think, Okinawa and also a Seventh-day Adventist uh area out in California. But the one thing about these th these people that is striking is, and the, the blue zone, for people that don't know, that's just pockets of areas where something about that area, something about the way the people live, the environment itself, a lot of people that live to be an old age there and live vibrantly. And what I found about most of these people is, and there, and a lot of them are not in fact, none of them actually claim like, oh, I'm vegan or I'm plant-based. That's just their natural way. And some of them, it's poorer societies and maybe they eat 
when they eat any sort of an animal product, it's some sort of a special thing. Maybe they eat it twice a year at some occasion. So the point being is, is they are getting all the, they're pretty much getting all of the advantage of eating a plant-based diet. And they're just, they're living a natural life. They tend to grow their own food. They do eat lots of fresh fruits and vegetables that they've grown with their own hands, getting out in the sun, connecting with that vitamin D, getting their hands in the dirt. Because when they're doing their own, and a lot of these blue zones, they grow their food and, or, you know, subsist like that. So they're getting the exercise plus growing their own food. And these people are vibrant. I mean, I just read of so many people that were vibrant, um, up into their late nineties and people over a hundred that could actually do stuff and weren't just like, okay, well they're still breathing, but you know what I mean? So I've just, for me, and like I say, that's just my conclusion. That's not me trying to debate a topic or whatever. It's just the, the hundred percent thing, uh, full, being fully raw has just never been that big of a thing for me. Um, and I, I feel great. I mean, you know, I don't know. Like I've said before, the only thing that could probably push me, but then I'd have to think like, okay, why did I get sick in the first place? If I had some real illness uh, that I needed to heal, I probably would go higher with the raw, um, you know, maybe even do some fasting. But as far as, um, uh, you know, needing to be 100% all the time, I don't think that's ever going to be a focus of mine. Like I say, I never say never, but I just don't, uh, that's just not something I focus on. So anyhow, Hope you guys enjoyed this one today. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.